Welcome back. Sold out Kipper Arena in Kansas City at the half. Pacific leading Providence 37-33. Bob, first half numbers. Well, I'll tell you what, they reveal something very interesting. They handle the ball very well. Right here, field goals about even. That's why the game is about even. Threes about even. That's why the game is about even. But this area, the turnovers and the points off the turnovers by Pacific, very much in their favor, 15 to six. That's why they have the four point lead right now. Interestingly enough, Providence, a team that averages nine steals a game, zero steals in the first half. Credit the ball handling of Pacific. You go to Gomes on the first play and he misses, but that's what you want. Doubly has it, Moriker. Gomes at 13 in the first half. Balance scoring by Pacific. And an early turnover by the Tigers, so back the other way. Maya Davis has been incredible in this game. The Big West Player of the Year. He shot the ball well from the perimeter. He was active on defense, and then also he steered the ship. Lots of points and assists for that young man. Very, very sound player. Interestingly enough, Douthit with three fouls because of the technical. Of the nine turnovers Providence had in the first half, Douthit had four of them. They actually played better without him when he was on the bench. He starts the second half. McGrath, good look, high off the window. Last touch by Providence. Played a minute of the second half. And Kemper, the 12th seed, Pacific Tigers against the 5th seed, Providence Friars. Craig Providence getting away from their zone, playing man to man. It's more successful for them in the first half. Yango, short, Gomes gathers it in baseline. Here comes McGrath. Leaves it for Kaba on the wing. Wants the long ball, bounces it. How about that? Gomes was not blocked down. He got the easy bucket. And that's why you take threes in transition. A lot of people don't like an early three, but I think it's a great play because we're tougher to block out in transition. And Gomes shows why. Gomes won a 20 finalist for the Wooden Award. Davis on the floor. Yango skis by. Yango with eight. Waving it off. Yango picks up the foul. This is a great drive. The bump, the official determined, was before the foul. A surface shot right there. Sanders slaps the ball up, said he couldn't get the bucket and the foul, but he did pick up the foul. So Sanders was the one who made that circus play on the last one, and they only got an inbound play out of it. Sanders only 55% from the free throw line. Gets the first. Near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has contributed more than $8 million to the general scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Sanders makes both. A good start for Providence. They got it inside twice to Gomes, and then Sanders twice on opportunity baskets. Yango scored last time inside. Well played game by both teams. Yango one on one with Dalton. Second opportunity fell off the iron. Sanders two on three. Slows it up. One thing about Dalton, who is very slow now, he's lost a shoe. They're going to wait for him. But they not wait too long. The shot clock is running. 17. He can alter a lot of shots with that length of his. He does alter a lot of shots. He's got 91 blocks on the season. He's not going to block many shots with his shoe falling off right there. Unfortunately, Sanders stepped out of bounds on that play. Tenth turnover now for the Friars. 
Lolo looks inside, gives it back out. Kaka tight up, no whistle. Kaka was perfect in the first half. Two for two from three-point range and made his two free throws for eight points. Dangle backs in, double team. Nice as he sliced through the defense of Providence. Dango in double figures with 10. He used strength versus height on that particular play. Much shorter than Douth it, but took it to him when they get close like that. Advantage strength. Block on the wing. And the whistle on Maya Davis. That will be his first. Right here, quickness on quickness. Davis can afford to take a chance like that with no fouls in the second half. Not a bad play for him to try to do that. He's really the two guard. David Dudley is really the point guard, but both very quick. McGrath oh. ah. miss. Sanders miss. And now oh, a takedown. Frustration foul by Sanders. Nice style point. <laughs> he was easy. He made this, missed the first shot. Right here, an easy play, and then he gets blocked. A little frustration. Pulls down the opponent. Second whistle on Sanders. 41-37, Pacific, 16-30 left. Davis knocked away, last touch by Gomes. 23 on the shot clock. Cockle in front of us, Bobble inbounds for Pacific. Out of the Big West Conference, went 17 and 1. And then won the Big West Tournament, beating Cal State Northridge by two, thanks to a couple of Maya Davis free throws. On Selection Sunday, Utah State, the other team that was 17 and 1 in this league, was not invited, caused some consternation in certain circles. But you can see Pacific, an outstanding team. And they and Utah State tied 17 and 1 in the play. Terrific year, terrific year for the Aggies and Stu Morrill. Oh, tremendous. Kaba, long range, up the front of the iron. Newton leads it to Davis. Tough pass. Yango on the trailer has it. Across the court, back inside. Yango stolen, but then stepped out of bounds. Boy, Kaba covered a lot of distance. 15.49 to go in Kansas City. Is that Scott?
Pacific leads Providence by four. Let's go courtside. Scott Kaplan with a story about the Swedish connection. That's right, Craig Bowler, Jack. You have Moriker on the Pacific side. You've got Anren on the side of Providence. These two guys were teammates this past summer playing for the Swedish national team. They played in the European Championships. Their team didn't win, but they got great experience playing against pros like Paul Gasol, Dirk Nowitzki. These guys, invaluable experience this summer. Friends from Sweden meeting here tonight in the NCAA basketball tournament, Craig. There is a foreign connection here. Pacific, as we mentioned. Corti from Providence, from Finland, and of course, England from Sweden. Douthat has it for Providence, and the Friars down by four, and the basketball. One of the great players in Pacific history, Michael Olawakandi from England as well. Koti, short. Cockles played a fine game. He's solid, handles the ball, passes the ball, tough, hard nose. Only takes shots when they're available. Dumbly puts it on the floor. Plenty of time on the shot. Pacific handles the ball well. Their spacing is so good. Providence normally a team that creates a lot of turnovers. And right here, when you don't double team Yango, he's got a lot of space to maneuver. That is going to get your big guy in foul trouble. And Douthat picks up his fourth. Bob, Douthat. actually, they're going to give that to Kaba. Ah, and that's a break for Providence. Yango makes good on the free throw, 11 points. Yango coming off 22 points, eight rebounds in the title game in the Big West Tournament against Northridge. In Kansas City, Pacific and Providence. Pacific, the 12th seed. In the St. Louis bracket, Providence, the fifth seed. Pacific led Bob at the half, 37-33. Guillaume Yango, Cockle, and Maya Davis have all contributed to the Tigers. Providence pretty much a one-man show to this point. Ryan Gomes, well, the All-American having a typical night for him, scoring, rebounding, and right here, they're trying to force it inside to him. But atypical of Providence, not forced any steals. That's their first steal of the game. Normally average nine, and that's why they are in a hole right now to the 12th seed. In the St. Louis bracket, one upset so far. Nevada beat Michigan State. All the other higher seeds have won so far. You see three ties, four lead changes. Under 15 minutes left here in Kansas City. Second half. Good patience by the Friars. Turn around, Gomes hangs on that pivot to the left hand. Gomes now with 17. How about that, Greg? You can tell why he's an All-American, and he is carrying his team right now. No scoring help, really. Cote has been somewhat of a help in the first half. Doubted, invisible on offense. Cockle drives left hand, bottom of the iron. Doubted has it now, back up from the ground across midcourt. Sodom is trying to push. Tempo! Give and go, and a bucket drops for Cote. His six point, three buckets. Pacific 43, Providence 41, Kemper Arena, Kansas City, 18,000 on hand. Kansas and Illinois Chicago will follow this game, and that's what many of these, these are fans are waiting for. 18,000 of them right here in Kemper Arena waiting the Jayhawks, but they're seeing a good one right here. This is our bracket, Providence and Pacific here, Kansas and Illinois Chicago to follow. Providence's defense has finally stepped up. The story of the game has been Pacific's stellar offense and passing, handling of the basketball, forcing Providence to come out of their standard zone and play man to man. And this man needs the ball. A touch on every play would be wise. Tough D by Newton. Hands off a grab in the corner. Brewington now has it across the court. Gomes misfires on the three. Newton, who's had a strong game off the bench, pulls down the arrow shot. 
Davis behind his back, feeds inside, ball strip. Leads it up to Goins. Douthat had trouble with that pass. Davis shot right by him. And contact for the throwback to Cockle. Well, Tim Wells does not like to see his center handling the ball in the middle of the lane, passing to his power forward in the fast break situation. But Providence is a team that plays with a great deal of energy, and they didn't have that energy in the first half. Second half, much better. Turnovers beginning to even out for these teams. Pacific had a huge advantage early, and that's why the score has evened out as well. Well, those turnovers have cost Providence. Pacific has turned the 10 TOs into 20 points. A little blood on the elbow of the All-American player. Gomes, the anchor for this team. They will fix that up and get him right back in. Bob Almost Andrew. at his average already. Bob Andron had checked in for Douthat. Now Douthat had to come back in after the blood on the elbow of Gomes. And he checks in instead for Ryan. Maya has been swept. Boy, has he been solid. Good handle, good passer. Myrick has started off well, but has not done a lot in the second half. A very skillful player at 6-9. Davis quick. Oh, a little certain shot nearly went in. Doubted the rebound. Pacific by two. Where will Providence go with Gomes on the bench? Cote, contact, no whistle. Short on the shot. Here come the Tigers. Cockle wants it deep off the front of the iron. And Davis up on the... up on the media table here on courtside. <laughs> That's what you like. Big time hustle, big time aggression by both squads. You got that one. Pacific and Providence feed into the St. Louis bracket. The Tigers up by two with 11.48 remaining here at Kemp Arena in Kansas City. And Fred, you begin to get the feeling that Providence is playing more aggressively in the second half, which is what they would like to do. Eight 
13,000 Kemp Arena, Kansas City. Heading down the home stretch, 11.48 remaining. Pacific up two on Providence. Ryan Gromes was just out of the lineup for a moment for a blood situation. He is now back. The All-American for Providence, 17 points and eight boards in this one. He is carrying the Friars and Pacific very well balanced. Everybody involved and Maya Davis, the leader. How quick was that? Underneath and the dish to Tyler Newton with eight off the bench. Well, Davis makes everyone better. Lots of nice... Cote pops out. 20 on the shot. Coming up on 11 minutes left. Craig, I'm so impressed with Pacific's passing. They've got 17 field goals and 13 assists on those 17 made baskets. Do it with the pass, not the dribble. And Bob, what's impressive to beyond that is the penetration and then the kick out. Gomes in traffic, hangs and falls. Gomes with 19. You're right, he's putting Providence on his back. He is really carrying them. He was fronted on that play, so Brewington took a long shot knowing Gomes would be there for the offensive board. It's been all Guillaume Yengo for Pacific in this half. Ball was thrown away, and Pacific coming back the other way. Ryan Gomes, when he is fronted, gets great position up between two people. Power personified. Even going to the floor, he gets a nice little English on this one. This guy knows his way around in the paint. 13th double-double this season. 19 points and 10 rebounds. His 34th career double-double. You know what he shoots from the free throw line? 87%, and he gets fouled a lot. How about the reach in? He can steal quick hands as well. Not a smart pass by Pacific. Two point Tiger Lee. Providence had zero steals until just a few minutes ago. They averaged nine a game, and now that they've gotten a few, they've gotten back in the game. Scoring, however, from other sources besides Gomes has been sparse. Around and out. Ball tipped, still loose. Here comes Pacific. Ball was tied up, no whistle. Cockle took a bullet pass. And now Pacific will slow it down. Davis running the point. 22 on the shot. Nine and a half minutes to play. Davis wide open three. Pacific has numbers. Gomes leans. Knocked away, fresh clock. Well, they boggled that. They had a four on one and came up empty and then eventually get a charge on the play. Not what you want from Providence in that situation. Right here, Brewington going hard to the basket. Instead of pulling up and landing on two feet, crashes right into the defender. Weak side help very much there. And as a result, it's going the other way. Brewington with his second foul. You know what I'm impressed with Davis about? He has great quickness, but he only uses it when necessary. Doesn't get out of control. Sometimes you have guys that are so quick, they go faster than they need to. That is not the case with Maya Davis. This young man knows how to play basketball, knows when to shut it on, shut it off, and put it on. Long three finds the bottom of the net. Cockle, who had a pair of threes in the first half, now with 11 points out of Raymond, Nebraska. He brought the whole town down to watch this game tonight. McCraft. And away from the ball, an elbow. Yango. Two on Guillaume Yango. Doubt it back in for defensive purposes. Sanders needs to get involved with the offense, as does Kaba and McGrath. Three ball on the way, got it. Rob Sanders, eight points for Sanders. Five in this half out of London, Connecticut. Very athletic. 
8.25 to go. Two-point game, Pacific and Providence. Cockle, nice lob. Yango, bang. 14 for Yango. Doubt that fronts, no weak side help. Result, easy dunk. Providence, not a team that plays a lot of man-to-man, -man, forced into doing it because Pacific played so well against their zone in the first half. McGrath wants the long ball, short. Pacific across midcourt. Doubly winds his way back. Under eight minutes to play. The 12 seed looking for an upset on the five. Big East versus Big West. Power conference against a mid-major. How about that? Inside. Strong move, Bucket. Yango beginning to take over this game with 16. Can you believe he did not start for his junior college squad? No. <laughs> his first year at Pacific in the NCAA tournament. 52-46. Pacific on top of Providence. Chicago just walked in. <laughs> Hence the bruise. Take a look at the game summary. Pacific leads Providence by 6, 52, 46. And Bob, I know the turnovers have evened out some, but when Providence, however this game ends, they're going to go back and look. 23 points. Pacific has scored off Providence turnovers. What separates these two teams with a 7.32 remaining? Well, that's it. You know, that's what, what's been happening. But Providence has evened it out lately. They've played much better defense, much more aggressive defense, creating some steals in the late going. Experience, however, counts for a lot. Bob Thomason told me yesterday, in close games, his team is very confident. They've played a lot of them, and they've won them all. Sanders, you could tell the minute he let it go, short on the three, then reached in for the foul. The quality of shots by each team is very important in end game situations. Providence not getting them, Pacific is. There is a timeout, 7.21 left, Pacific on top of Providence.
Bryce, I'm watching. Yeah, baby. Gotcha. Tournament news and notes, higher seeds having their way so far. 8-0, by the way, today. Big East, ACC perfect, and Utah loses in the first round, third time in 24 appearances. Pacific, very smart. Cockle makes a three. They've shot well from the perimeter, but their passing has been exquisite. No help on the weak side. Yango goes crazy. Cockle to Yango again. Yango's got 16 points. Cockle, five assists. And the passing has been superb by this Pacific team. On their 20 baskets, they have 16 assists. Unselfish, they have the inclination to pass and the skill as well. Worker pops out, takes the ball, cockle, drops it inside. Yingo, strong move, bounce it off the rim. Now, Bob, let's talk about the Big West Conference. A lot of talk on Selection Sunday. Utah State becoming the only team ranked in both polls never to be taken into the NCAA tournament. Both these schools, Pacific, Utah State, coming out of the Big West. Well, there's the comparison. Both were 17 and one, and it seems as if one of them had to win their conference tournament. Cal State Northridge beat Utah State, and as a result, at 25 and four, left out of the big dance. Yango makes both free throws. 18 points for the junior from Paris, France. Seven minutes left. Can a 12 seed beat the five? Well, Manhattan beat Florida, and the only other lower seed to win was Nevada beating Michigan State. So in this year of parity, the higher seeds really have dominated. Bob, somebody besides Gomes has to step up for the Friars. He's 8 of 15. The rest of the team now 10 of 34. Well, that is the exact thing that we've talked about all day. Gomes has carried them on, their, on his back. They are not getting quality shots other than his. Moriker flies through for the rebound. Well, whistle stops play. Over the back. Well, don't miss a minute of March Madness. Good live video from all the games not shown in your area, plus access archives of games you missed, highlights, press conferences, and much more. Go to NCAAsports.com and click on live video. Well, down eight, you asked who can step up for Providence. McGrath does not seem to want to. Sheikou Kaba, I'm sure, is willing, and Sanders perhaps as well. But right now, very hesitant team in white. Anrin answers the call. A much needed bucket for Providence. Anrin's first bucket, the senior from Sweden. Well, he wants to make sure that Mariker doesn't get all the accolades in this team. In this game, both guys from Sweden playing on opposite coasts in the United States. Gomes flipped it away. Mariker recovers, 17 on the shot. Davis looks inside. He's dangerous from that spot. 
He has great quickness, and he gets to that quickness in a hurry. One step, and he's at full speed. Picked up by Kaba. High off the window and got it. Clutch player. You can see why he is the Big West player of the year. Gomes, I get the feeling, feels a little panicky. Says, I'm going to have to do it. 5-17 left, 56-48 Pacific. Pacific has the lead because they're getting better quality shots. The shots Providence getting contested, not executing offensively very well. Davis again around Kaba to the corner. Good passing, good patience, Pacific. Loose ball, Friars have it. Here comes Kaba. Goes right, goes left, throws it away. He wanted Gomes baseline. Gomes is dragging. He's in the backcourt behind the basketball, having to carry this team, starting to feel fatigue. Dwight Brewington has come off the bench for Providence. He'll check in. Next whistle. This Pacific team beat that Nevada team that we just talked about upsetting Michigan State. They also played against Duke and against St. Joseph this year. So stiff competition, not something that they are foreign to. Boy, everything working. Two, one on the shot. Davis, close. Coming up on the four-minute mark, McGrath, Bob, Scones, got it. You can tell he needs some air. For a guy who's tired, he's still running the floor on the offensive end, but his mouth is wide open, gasping for air right here. To his shorts are down around the calf. And a timeout much needed for Ryan Gomes. Six-point game in Kansas City. Pacific, 56, and the Friars, 50. that energy up. seed Pacific up six right here later on Kansas against Illinois Chicago right here and later on UAB and Washington Bob I'm anxious the, the to St. see St. Louis bracket yeah it's tough I'm anxious to see how Kansas fares Simeon struggling with the groin Langford has knee problems Illinois Chicago this will be a very interesting matchup the late game here in Kansas City Illinois Chicago highly motivated they have been to the NCAA tournament two years ago in Dallas and a lot of the same players are on that team of course Kansas has not lost a game in March in two years to the final four of the last two seasons Tyler Newton his middle name I said it once, I gotta say it again. Tyler Isaac Newton. <laughs> gotta love it. 65% free throw shooter. Newton was the guy who threw the rocks off the top of the building to talk about gravity, right? <laughs> Missed the free throw. Cote brings it down, now hands him a graph. Time a factor. Quality of shots. Big time factor in in-game situations. Providence trailing. They must get quality shots and as fast as possible. Cote. That is not quality. A follow-up. Gomes. Cote. Stick to it to this on the boards for Providence. Showing some heart right here. They have not had a lot of those kinds of baskets in the game. Cote is a three-point artist. A 55% shooter from outside the arc. His buckets tonight have come inside, mostly on offensive rebounds. And that is not his game, although showing diversity in this one. Our CBS Sportsline stat of the game, it is points off turnovers, Pacific taking advantage, putting 23 down, and get complete tournament coverage at cbssportsline.com. Check this routine on the free throw line. Maya Davis kneels down, waits, and then shoots. It works for him, 85%. Davis with 13.
possible upset in the making. Kansas City Kipper Arena. 58-52, the 12th seed against the number five, Providence Friars, and a timeout. We'll be back to Kipper after this time on CBS. Looks like a calf or an ankle. You see that, Vic? Yeah, buddy. What's that? Right, but did, did you hear us tell you about Gomes in the huddle? Okay. All right. Story about Davis making them in the. Yeah, each of them have three left. Good, good shot right there. Calf, calf, calf. Yep. Uh, it's left. It's his... yeah. Good going, Steve. Pacific leading Providence by 6, 3.02 remaining. Timeouts, three apiece. Possession arrow pointing to Pacific. Now on that Providence bench during the timeout, Ryan Gomes has been worked on by the trainer, and it's the left calf. And Bob, I don't know if it's pulled or in the sense of fatigue or dehydration. Cramping could be a possibility. I think it cramped up. I watched him on the last possession defensively, walking on it gingerly, but he's a tough guy. Possible upset right here, a 12 and a 5 seed. Keep in mind, Pacific this year, 13 and 2 in games decided by 10 points or less. They know how to play when it's tight. Under three minutes left. Six point Pacific lead. Every possession now playing a part in the outcome of this game for Providence. McGrath, Yango picks him up, cuts down the lane. That the seventh foul. So Andrew will shoot one and one. Cockle picks up the foul, and that is the 17th foul. So Andrew toes the line. Nobody in the double bonus so far. Anren seldom used sub, but over the years he has played a great deal. Coming up big, made a two a while ago. Providence still struggling to find scorers besides their All-American Gomes. Bob, only his sixth trip to the free throw line. He's one of five on the season. Big, Pick the big right man. time to make one. Three points for Andren. All in this half, a senior, 6'7", 220. As a team, and think about this down the stretch, Providence, 72% as a team from the free throw line. Andron, big, big pair of free throws. Pacific been in a lot of close games this year, as I mentioned. They're 13 and two in close games. So when they get into these kinds of situations, very confident. And Maya Davis with the basketball, I would trust him anytime. He has played spectacularly tonight. Davis picked up by McGrath. Under two and a half to go. 20 on the shot clock. Baseline is available for drives right here. Dudley. Kaba picks him up. Nearly had the steal. Five on the shot, four on the shot, three on the shot. 
reach in with two on the shot clock. Unbelievable play right there. You know, a lot of times you say, how can he foul at this point? But I'll tell you what, Davis creates that foul by splitting two defenders. You got to call that. They knocked him to the floor. Very unusual style at the free throw line. Gets down like a catcher in baseball. Waits for the ball. Catches it when he's like that. Can you call strikes and balls on this? Looks like a strike right down the middle. And then goes into it. But he is very successful there. Davis three of four from the line. Deep knee bend. Short. But he grabs the miss. Credit Newton kept the ball alive with his long arms. That is a killer kind of play when you're behind. Under two minutes. Pacific the 12 seed. Providence the five. In the St. Louis bracket. No reason to foul right here. Providence going to play straight up. Davis, the guy who is the most difficult to guard in this situation. Nice play guard by Gomes hedging out. Six on the shot. Five. Davis fires up the three. Got it! 16 for Maya Davis and a timeout. Work that shot clock to four. 129 left. Davis dials and hits. Wow. My. Did you see how Steve stayed on his hand? You can see his follow through on that shot. Oh Beautiful. my God. Gomes, Gomes and, and Maya Davis. And Dyeth. Yango's played well, but Davis has done it oh, all. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the Pacific Band is playing their tune here in Kansas City. And Davis, Bob, working the shot clock, and that is a long downtown three. And nothing but bottom. Keep in mind, it was a four-point game till he made that. Now it's Panic City for the Friars, down seven. 120 to go. Cote, who wants the shot? Gomes says, I'll take it. Cockle covers up. And Pacific can smell upset. The 12 against the 5. The winner takes on Kansas, Illinois, Chicago winner. Kaba trying to stay close, but Davis extremely quick and great with both hands on the dribble. Backs it back out, nearly lost his foot in 49 seconds. Game clock, 10 on the shot. Doubling around the grass. Drives, hangs. <laughs> His first bucket, and that could be the dagger. Gonzo says, let's keep playing. Oh, my goodness. Davis is three, and that shot by David Dubley. You have got to be kidding me. Pacific 63, Providence 56. Oh, man. Wow. Gotcha. Is this his first basket? Yeah. Pacific up seven on this spectacular off-handed, off-the-glass play. The first shot of the game for David Dubley. And can these guys feel it? You bet they can. Pacific, spectacular plays by their guards late. Have them in great, great shape. 
16 by Maya Davis. Yango, 18 points. And Cockle has thrown in 11. And Dudley's bucket right there may have done it. His first hoop of the night. Unbelievable. 34 and change remaining. Expect a trap and a timeout. Timeout Pacific. Great D by Providence on the end line out of bounds. Time to name the Chevrolet players of the game. And Maya Davis was 17 points, 6 of 14. Ryan Gomes, 23 points, 11 rebounds. Those are the Chevy MVPs. 34 ticks. Tough trap in the corner. Timeout Pacific. And another quick timeout from Kansas City. We'll be back. Wow, the clock hasn't moved. Two possessions. If they play KU. <laughs> Amen. Seconds, four tenths of another. Timeouts, you see, one apiece for Pacific and Providence, and the possession arrow. Bad news for Providence. It points, it points to Pacific. And there's the bench of Providence, the they, fifth seed. They have had a great, great season, ranked 12th in the nation. They have lost three in a row coming into this game, but it is over yet. Gomes says no way. Back-to-back -back buckets, 25 for the big guy. Providence trying to come back. You believe what's happening here? Oh my, three possessions in a row. They couldn't get it in twice and then they steal it. Wow. Are they, at, are they out of timeouts? Out of timeouts, okay. This ain't over yet, guys. Woo. Okay, I got you. Okay. Take it. Yes. Out of the break. Okay. It is not over yet, folks. The clock has only moved four seconds in the last three possessions. Providence forced two timeouts, got a steal, still in it. Pacific struggling with the inbound situation. Providence not fouling automatically, trying to trap first. This time they get one. Pacific did a good job, however, of inbounding to a great free throw shooter. Maya Davis, 85% from the free throw line for the year. And David Dudley, the other guard, 91%. So they did a good job of getting it to the right guy, knowing he'd be fouled. Rob Sanders with his third foul. Pacific, the 12th seed. On their way to an upset over Providence, the fifth seed in the St. Louis bracket. Pacific, you see their bench trying to hold in that emotion. 24 and 7 on the year. The 24 wins tying their school record for wins. A victory tonight gives them a new school record and a rare miss by Davis at the free throw line. Well, even if he makes this, they're two threes away from tying the game. Providence can choose to shoot the three or go to the basket, score, and call timeout. Nobody on the lane for Pacific. Davis around and out. Providence must hurry. Kaba up the floor. Looks inside. Now a lob pass to the corner. It'll touch. Back to Kaba for three. Short. Gomes. Tip wouldn't go. And Pacific has it.
That is not an intentional foul as far as the rule book is concerned. Sanders going after it. Providence got a clean shot on an inside outside three. Kaba missed it. And of course, Gomes didn't have the second effort in him late in the game. Sanders runs down David. And the 91% free throw shooter will have his chance. That's the fifth foul on Sanders, who had to run down court with nine seconds remaining. Well, Pacific has had an historical season. And if they get this win, it will be even more spectacular. Bob Thomason, their coach, played at Pacific, coaching there 16 years. Was an all-star player for that school. And this is our bracket, the St. Louis bracket. Illinois, Chicago, and Kansas coming up next. Current winning streaks in college basketball. Gonzaga with 21 straight, Pacific with 15. Tied with Illinois, Chicago, who plays next against Kansas. Oh, man. I'll tell you what. Doesn't get much better than this. Of course, a home game for the Jayhawks in this building. Veritably a home game. And Illinois Chicago street kids from Chicago know how to play, have been in the tournament two seasons ago. Cedric Banks and Martel Bailey leading that group. Doubly with 9.1 seconds. Short. Arms are locked on that Pacific bench. Emotions high on what could be. Pacific has not won a tournament game in the NCAA since 1971. Could it be tonight? Their head coach played on that club. Here we go. 64-58. Cote, short. And Pacific is up. They can smell it, they can feel it. This is what you live for. Not only getting into the tournament, but oh, winning a game. Davis counts it! And it's over in Kansas City. The 12 has upset the 5, Greg, again. 66-58. Pacific from the Big West knocks off the Friars from the Big East. The brackets. Pacific advances. Who will they play? Kansas or Illinois, Chicago next. This is Kentucky's bracket. St. Louis is the next stop for these teams. It's a final. Pacific moves on to round two, their first win since 1971. Great Gumbel on the other side after this break. Thomason, congratulations. What a huge upset win. Last time Pacific won a tournament game, you, my friend, were on that team. How do you feel? Well, we feel great. Uh, kids played great all game, and, and uh, we had pretty good control of it, but they made good runs at us, and uh, our guards stepped up big time down the stretch, made some big key plays. Yeah, Coach, the confidence. We talked about it yesterday. How confident this team was. 17-1 and in conference, a 15-game winning streak. How much do you think that played in tonight's victory? Oh, it does, and especially when it gets to three minutes to go in the game. These guys think they, nobody can beat them, and they made some big plays, and uh, I'm not for sure if I drew up that play, he hit that three on, but it was your big one tonight. All right, Coach, thank you very much. Let's talk to your star player, Maya Davis. Leading scorer all season. Your team had to have you tonight, and you had the dagger with you. When you had to finish them off, you hit the huge three. How you feeling? We feel, I feel unbelievable I mean, right now. I mean, this is a game that nobody thought we was going to win, but nobody knew about UOP and uh, our team. We knew we was going to come out and give them a good game. We knew they was going to come out, and that's all we respected them. And uh, obviously, they, I didn't think they respected us too well, but we came out with a victory tonight. When you got the ball and you had to launch it, did you know it was going down? It's a, it's a shot you practice every day. Go, uh, go to the gym early and shoot by yourself. But uh, I mean, I have confidence in myself, and my team has confidence in me. So I was, I was elected to shoot that shot. All right, congratulations, Greg Gumble, a 12 over a five in Kansas City. Back to you.